What is up everyone, Nick here. Welcome to the show if you're new. Thanks for coming back if you're not. It's been a while since I've been in front of the old camera, so what is up? Good to see you all. Um, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Neo's continuing fall from grace. You know, it's been a month, we've been pretty much in the red every single day. We're gonna be talking about what analysts are saying, just how low Neo's share valuations can fall, and what might be a good entry point for a long-term position. We have a ton to get to in today's episode, but before we get it, Webull is giving out two free stocks worth up to $1,850 for free. They are a 0% commissions-based trading platform, offer some of the best analytics in the game. They offer before and after hours trading. This can be crucial. They really are one of my favorite trading apps to use. Uh, check out our Patreon page. We have more content under the radar stocks. Uh, this also gives you exclusive access into our private Discord channels. This is where you can see all of my real-time trades that interest you. Uh, you can see our portfolios there. A lot of people love it. The chat is always popping off. I absolutely love it. Uh, there's been some really good tips and tricks in there and some under the radar stocks. So if that interests you, go check it out. The link is in the description. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so we can see Neo's share price is continuing to fall. Uh, at time of filming, we're sitting at 35.24, down 7.68% yet again, $2.93 loss. Uh, we can see that we were up highs all the old glory days, 62.85. We have fallen down more than 40% in just a matter of weeks. I actually just went back and checked and in the last 18 trading days, we have finished the day down 15 times, 15 out of 18 days in the red. It hurts. I'm not going to lie. Even the days in the green aren't that great and we can't seem to find any substantial support level. So it's clear something big is happening and we need to decide what to do. So just how low could Neo's share price actually fall? Well, to know that, we need to know why NEO's share price is actually falling in the first place. So what's going on? Well, first remember there are a ton of macroeconomics affecting the stock market right now. There is a huge amount of uncertainty within the economy at large, and if investors hate one thing more than anything, it's uncertainty within the market. We are also seeing a mass shift in sentiments. If you'd watched my video on the weekend, I stated that I was pretty sure we were gonna see NEO in the red for the majority of this week. And well, why is that? Well, you may know that the latest federal stimulus package has passed. The j money printer is at it again, absolutely flooding the economy with printed cash out of thin air. Now with this stimulus being addressed into the market, vaccines rolling out left, right, and center, and an overall healthy 2021 economic recovery, in terms of businesses opening and returning to somewhat of a new normal, we are seeing a shift away from the tech and growth stocks that dominated for the majority of 2020. We are seeing a lot of this money reallocate back into the blue chip and energy stocks that have been pummeled the last year. EV clean energy plays like NEO and Tesla have really taken the brunt of this and been decimated the past month. The 10-year treasury bond yield has been rising. This is signifying that bond traders believe that inflation will add downwards pressure to the economy. Investors will likely continue to dump bonds, causing long-term inflation rates to continue rising. We can use the price of crude oil to gauge inflation. Now we are seeing the price of oil skyrocket in the past few weeks. This could very well signify future reallocation away from growth stocks like NEO, and we could see these share prices continue to fall. Now you might've noticed that the fundamental factors I'm focusing on here have virtually nothing to do with NEO or its fundamentals or continued business operations. The only real key piece that NEO distributed into the investment world within the past month that could have actually potentially sent shares down was their earnings report. This was released on March 1st. Now, if you've watched my channel, you'll know that I was actually pretty bullish on their earnings report. I went through it time and time again, and I didn't really see any major red flags. I actually kind of liked it. Now, for the most part, investors hated it. Well, why is this? Well, a lot of investors look at one key piece of information in an earnings report, and that's their EPS. NEO did, in fact, miss their EPS, which sent you know tons of investors running 
for the doors away from NEO stock forever. They missed EPS, how could they? I'm gone. I actually went into this and their EPS was missed for a number of reasons. However, none were really shocking to me. They increased their R&D, which I actually liked. Uh, growth companies need to do this. They need to expand, they need to grow, they need to develop new products. And there was also a matter of exchange rates between the renminbi and USD that could have potentially impacted their EPS. Their growth margins and vehicle margins improved to a massive 17.2%. They increased their cash position to $6.5 billion USD, and they are expanding at a rapid rate. They are expanding their pre-existing JAC partnership to expand to 150,000 units annually under one shift and under two shifts, 300,000 vehicles. They are also expanding their production through the Hefei Industrial Auto Park. This is also guiding for 300,000 vehicles annually. This is all extremely good long-term news and we as investors need to keep our eyes focused on the future. Now there were a few factors that actually slightly worried me about their Q4 guidance. But as you'll see, these are all slightly out of their own control. Now, one of the things I've liked so much about NEO is they are continually able to find a way to prevail. When supply strain was decimating their output, they found a way to overcome this. They formed robust supply webs and increased deliveries month over month. They found a way to finance their operations when they had virtually no cash. They bought back their company through tranches. They raised capital time and time again. This is one of the main reasons I'm actually so bullish on NEO in the long run. Their management to me is right up here. They are so strong and they were willing to prevail and willing to do virtually anything to ensure pure domination. However, something is slowly changing, and that's that things are leaving slowly NEO's control through no fault of their own. This has me slightly worried. We are seeing a worldwide shortage in supplies crucial to building electric vehicles. We are seeing powertrain chips dwindle in supply and increase in demand. EV companies are fighting over this extremely limited supply. And because of this, NEO has guided for a stagnating monthly output delivery up until at least July this year. Now after that, if we see a decrease in chip supply, we will unfortunately see a decrease in NEO output. If this does happen, many investors who see this dwindling NEO output in terms of deliveries might attribute this to a slowing or decreasing growth and sell all their shares in fear. This in turn could deflate NEO's share price and dwindle their long-term prospects. We are also running into a global shortage of electric vehicle batteries themselves. This has shunted NEO's ability to output vehicles. We are seeing clean energy stocks get decimated due to this news more readily coming out in news briefings. However, like I said, I do think NEO will be able to get through 2021, delivering around 7,000 to 7,500 units per month. Now that was all the dark stuff, let's get that out of the way. That's, that's said and done with. Now moving throughout the course of the year, if chip and battery supply is continually mitigated, this could be absolutely monumental for NEO's share price. And here's why. Q1 2022 is NEO's time to shine. This is when NEO is simultaneously preparing to release their ET7, equipped with a 150 kilowatt hour battery cell pack. This can lead up to 1000 kilometers any DC range. Their new factory and their new extension, allowing up to 600,000 vehicles annually, will be in full throttle then. And we will likely see NEO entering Europe. They are planning for a likely Oslo, Norway expansion. They are also well underway in an infrastructure increase program to build more swapping stations, specifically the 2.0 type, up to 500 by the end of the year. Looking into NEO Day 2021 coming up at the end of the year, I do think they will be releasing another new sedan and this will likely be within the affordability market. And there's lots of things that actually point to this. I'll have a complete video dedicated specifically to that. We need to remember their cash position at $6.5 billion. They are well padded out for this. We need to remember their long-term prospects and just how promising this company can be in the future. Now with all that bullishness being said, I do unfortunately think we are entering a quite shaky and bearish time for EV and growth stocks across the board. I do not by any means think we are out of the woods just yet. I wouldn't be surprised to see NEO hovering around the low 30s and potentially even the high 20s in the coming weeks. Now as always, if you have watched my show before, 
My sentiments about NEO have not changed whatsoever. I will be picking up additional shares through a dollar cost averaging basis like I always do. I keep my eyes focused on the long-term potential, just how huge this company could be three, five, 10 years down the line. I don't get focused on this week to week or month to month or even year to year volatility. I am thinking years and years down the line and I really do think NEO is going to dominate the day within China and then expand worldwide. What are you doing? Are you buying, selling, holding? I'm very curious. Don't forget about the Webull promo, two free stocks worth up to $1,850 for free. You can trade before and after hours markets. They are my favorite trading program going. It's 0% commissions, it's a win-win. Also check out our Patreon page. There's under the radar stocks, more content behind the scenes. This gives you access into our private Discord channel. The chat is always popping off. This is where you can see our trades in real time and all of our portfolios. And you know what? I'd appreciate it. There's a free one too if you want that too. Anyways, everyone, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, happy trading, cheers.